Shabbat to everyone. What a blessing it is for us to be here on this beautiful Sabbath morning. Amen. Amen. God has been good to us. He has kept us safe. And we are still alive. Amen. Amen. And that's enough reason to give him all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In this day and age of contention and strife, this day of uncertainty, this day of perplexity, we are reminded that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. And David said, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall not trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, Amen. nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Amen. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at the right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with an eye shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against his stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall not trample on the feet. Because he has, he has set his law upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he had done my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. What goes of, it, of assurance we have from the psalmist in Psalm 91? Amen. It's a promise of assurance. If we dwell under the shadow of the Almighty, He is God, and no one can touch us. Amen? Amen. Whatever He allows to come our way, it is for His glory Amen. and for our blessing. It's good to see you, so many of us here this morning, and a special welcome to you. I invite you to bow your heads with me as we have a word of prayer. Loving Father, never as we meet in this wonderful setting, we ask, O oh Lord, that you will visit with us, send your Holy Spirit to be with us and in us. As we open your words, open our minds, and give us understanding. Speak to me, through me, and for me. Let your words be riveted into every fiber of our lives. May it have sanctified effect on our characters. May our words elicit from us a response to serve you. And Lord, may we learn something that will grow, draw us closer to you and help us to be careful to give you alone all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. The story is told of a farmer who was faithful to God and he was faithful in his tithes and offerings and he worshipped God faithfully every Sabbath. And his neighbor was also a farmer but always throwing words and his faithful servant of God. And one day some grasshoppers came and ate all his crops. And he came and he laughed at this Christian. He said, where is your God now? And so humbly and patiently he said, if God wants to graze his grasshoppers on his own property, that's his business. <laughs> In the meantime, I'll praise his name. Amen. Amen. Whatever happens, we gotta praise God. What do you say? Amen. 
Amen. When Jesus died on the cross, he redeemed the entire planet. So if you work for a hundred dollars, friend of mine, how much of it belongs to God? All of it belongs to God. He asked of us to return one tenth. Along with that, a free will offering. Amen. But all of it belongs to God. All of us belongs to God. Not only by creation, but also by redemption. We are bought with a price. Our scripture reading that was so heavily read in Isaiah 41 and verse 10, it says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. This is my favorite promise. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. God has given us the promise of assurance that we need not fear. Amen? Amen. Because He is God. Now, if your Bible is came with you this morning, I want you to say Amen. Amen. If it did not come with you, I want you to say, Oh me. <laughs> Thy word, Psalm 119 and verse 105, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. Yes. Verse 9 says, Very tall shall a young man cleanse his way, but by taking heed according to his word. David said in verse 11, I would have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Once we keep the word of God in our hearts and our minds, it is difficult to sin. Amen? Yes. I want you to turn to the book of Luke. Book of Luke, chapter 10. And we'll be reading from verse 30 onwards. For those of you who love titles, I've entitled the message, The Inkeeper. And we, we said down here about the Inkeeper. But we want to have a look at him this morning. I read in your hearing from verse 30 onward. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levi, when he was at a place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took two pens and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay it. Uh, for those of you who have been around in the church and familiar with the scriptures, I'm sure that you have come across this story. It has generated endless discussion, and we call it the Good Samaritan. And uh, we want to look into these words because whatever God says, it is not a play with words. Whatever God says, there is a lesson that is relevant for every time, for every age, for every kindred, tongue, and people. It is relevant for us today. Amen? Amen. The Word of God is ever present. It is not a passive pastime. 
It is a daily experience because the hymn writer says, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus. And people who love God spend time with His Word. Yes. Now the backdrop to the story that Jesus told goes back the, the story that Jesus told about the Good Samaritan was in reference to a question that was asked. And this is the reason for giving the story. And we pick it up from verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted, tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? This lawyer this expositor of the law was a brilliant individual. He had been studying the scriptures and he wanted something more, something more meaningful. As a matter of fact, he was a bit discouraged of the lifestyle and the habits of the Pharisees and uh, the religious leaders of the day. He wanted something more. So he decided to go directly to Christ and ask a very plain and pointed question. He bypassed the rituals of the ceremonies because in his mind, the ceremonies were meaningless. And the Jews were given the ceremonies the, in, the, in the sanctuary service as a means of pointing forward to an event that was to come. But they began to trust in the rituals as a means of salvation in itself. Yes. So he bypassed the rituals and he wanted to know with all sincerity, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Because the Pharisees believed if you did all that the law had said, then you would earn eternal life. Now, there are many religious groups in the days of Jesus. We wouldn't get into all of them. And the Pharisees had an influence over the people so much so that the people thought if they disobeyed the Pharisees, it was like disobeying God himself. Yes. So they were glad. They were ecstatic when this lawyer asked Jesus the question. They thought that now this lawyer will entrap Jesus because they were in the crowd. Now we got it. So the lawyer stood up, tempting him, tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And I believe that's a very sincere question. What do you say? What must I do to be saved? As a matter of fact, that is the greatest question ever asked. What must I do to be saved? And the greatest answer ever given is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The greatest question ever asked and the greatest answer ever given. And Christ said unto him, verse 26, he said unto him, what is written in the law, how read it thou? You see, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, don't play Christ in not, in not upholding the law. They said, they accused Christ of placing little regard on the law. But now when Christ said to this ex exposite of the law, what is written in the law? So Christ amplified the law. So he said as the critics. Yes. Christ pointed to the law that they accused him of don't play. Because many times they accuse Jesus of breaking the law. But now he amplified the law in answer to the question. Now the question that you will see later on made absolutely no sense because Jesus wanted a questioner to answer the question for himself. Christ was not about to get into debate, any discussion. You see, friend of mine, when God says something, it's not for debate or discussion. Amen. God means exactly what He says. If He says do, He means do. If He says don't, He means don't. Amen? Amen. God does not play words. When He 
said to Adam in the day that you eat, you shall surely die. There are no loopholes within that contract. There was no hidden agenda there. Amen? Amen. In the day that you eat, you shall surely die. What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. So he answered a question himself. Now imagine if you ask a question and uh, it was thrown back at you and you had the answer, then you feel a bit foolish. So he felt a little, a little bit foolish, but in order to prove himself, he decided to throw another question at Jesus. Because Jesus was on top of the game. Amen? Jesus was a step ahead of him. So he decided to ask Jesus another question. Well, who is my neighbor? The law in Israel was, the Lord our God is one law. And he quoted from the Ten Commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your might. And love your neighbor as yourself. But in order to prove himself and not be embarrassed by the multitude and the crowd, he asked Jesus, well, who is my neighbor? Now, I want us to understand, when he asked this question, he was not talking about the Samaritans or the strangers. In the mind of every Jew, if you are not a Jew, you are considered either a pig or a dog. Clearly, they were your enemies. So the question was, who is my neighbor within the context of Judaism? Because there were different classes in Judaism. There were the elite. There are those who are physically healthy. There are those who are rich. Within the context of Judaism, who is my neighbor? Whom shall I love? Should I love the poor, the underlettered, the ignorant, within the context of Judaism? Well, who is my neighbor? So, Jesus proceeded, not with argument, but to give a story. And by the way, the best way to deal with error is to present truth. Right. Amen? Amen? Thy word is truth. Not philosophy, but the word of God. Yes. When you stand on the word of God, you can jump high and you can shout loud. Because you have a firm foundation. Amen? Amen? This is no shaky ground. <laughs> the Bible stands on its own authority. Yes. Amen? Yes. We don't need history to support the scriptures. As a matter of fact, the scriptures support history. Amen? Amen. The Bible is God's solid word. It is, a, it is as eternal as God himself. Amen. So Jesus said, Picking up from verse 28, thou hast answered, right, this do, and thou shalt live. So Jesus amplified the law. Live according to the law, and you shall live. Amen? Yes. Now salvation is not in the law. Salvation is in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. But the law is a transcript of his character. Yes. Righteousness is right doing. Amen? We have no righteousness of our own. Our righteousness comes from Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the only one who ever lived right. Amen? Yes. Could you take out the fan, please? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, a certain man, a certain man, an unnamed guy, some individual, some guy, if you say in modern language today, some guy, somebody of no big reputation, some guy, they don't give any pedigree, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. It was a descent from Jerusalem to Jericho. Some guy, 
And in his journey, he fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. In other words, he received quite a beating. Now, later on, we'll recognize that this guy was a Jew. But the scripture says when Jesus spoke about this parable, we discover that he's, he mentioned a priest and a Levite. The priest and the Levite, and by the way, this was not just a parable, this was an actual event. This actually took place. And the priest and the Levite were in the crowd, were in the multitude listening, listening to the story that had already transpired. So they were in the crowd. Make no mistake about the friend of mine. God knows how to figure us out, amen? amen? So he fell among Steve, they stripped him of his raiment, they wounded him, departed, leaving him half dead. Now that's a very sad situation to be in. In other words, he was basically unconscious. The Bible says he was half dead. The Jews hated anybody who was not a Jew, and they would not receive help, the status, they would not accept your help even though they were dying in. One scholar said that this guy was unconscious because if he was conscious and a Samaritan was assisting his situation, he would have refused the help. That's how strong their prejudice was. So God had to allow him to be in an unconscious state in order to be helped. Imagine the hatred for others was so strong. Even if they were in dire need, they would refuse the help. Now I know that we have heard about this story and and we talk about the priest and the Levite, and, and, and the priest represent the pastors, and, and, and the Levite represent the, the members of the church, the leaders of the church, and we have exhausted the story, and we, we conclude that they have lost their way, and the individual who fell amongst these represent you and I, because you have been all been beaten and battered and bruised and broken and left half dead by the enemy, the devil. So we're in a mix-up, mess-up situation. <coughs> We are in need of help. But I'm going to the message. They ain't give up. Oh. Amen. Amen. And by chance they came on a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by the other side. And likewise the Levite, the Levite was an influence to the priest. He served the priest in the synagogue. And when he was at the, the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. Now they were taught to care for individuals who were in need. They were, <laughs> they were the ones who were to preach and educate the people in kindness and in gentleness, and showing meekness, and having mercy. They were the ones who would explain the scriptures to the congregation. And it was expected of them to practice what they preach. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Now I'm going to come home to all of us this morning. Amen? Yeah. Including myself. Amen? Amen? Amen. Well, I'm a beggar just like you telling another beggar where to find the bread. Amen? Amen. I did not write the letter. I'm just a mailman delivering the mail. Amen? Oh. It is God's book. 